Hey guys, so today we're building a spray booth here. Um, got a new Hulk statue I'm, I'm putting together. It's about uh, 25 inches wide and it's about 24 inches high. So this is the base of the booth. Not much right now, but as the video gets you know down the line, I'll be adding more stuff to it. Got a couple exhaust fans to put in, some duct work. And uh, when you guys see the final video, once I post it on YouTube, you'll be seeing the whole thing from start to finish. I'll just tell you right now what I did so far. Basically, it's pretty obvious, uh, two by fours. And a carbon 30 inch square. It's a 30 inch square basically. Um, obviously the side pieces here. This side here is 30 inches. And then it's like 27 for the center here. This part right here. Then I put a switch here. Out the box. I notched it out. And I put a double button switch. One for the exhaust fan. One's going to be for the light. We have lights in here also. Alright. I'll add some more stuff to it. And I'll continue to put the video in a little bit. Thanks. Just uh, hang tight. Hang tight. Okay, these are the exhaust fans I'm using here. Um, got two of them. I'm gonna put one here, mount it here. I have to bend that tab right over here. Bend this over 90 degrees and secure it to here and secure it to here also, so it sits flush. And the other fan is gonna be right over here. So I have two on the ends because this will be the, this is the front. And this will be the back of the, or there's two R's at the back of the, the, um, the booth. But what you gotta do is, there's wires inside here. You gotta pull out. I'm trying to do this with my hand holding it, so hopefully uh, the video comes out okay. But in order to do this, though, this is normally tucked inside. What you gotta do is you gotta pop this out over here. Now, obviously, careful because they're very sharp edges. I'm gonna try to do this without cutting myself here. Gonna pry this out a little bit until it pops. I lift up this whole entire unit. Wait, sorry, wrong side. This side pops. Here we go. <laughs> Let's flip it over. That much easier to go. So I'm trying to use one hand here. You push this back and you pop this up. And the whole motor, everything lifts out of there. There's an outlet right here where it plugs into. There's a little tab right here. You push this up. And normally this, I already pushed it down, but this is normally blocking this hole. So if you pull it up, there's a hole underneath. So it can access that way or this way. If you push down, you go out this side, which is what I want. So you put the wires back through there. Put the piece right here. Kind of line up there. Line up in the slot right there. And just make sure it's down all the way. That's it. Now, this can only go on one way. As you can see, the slot there it goes where the plug is. So you put this side in first. These two tabs. Just like this. So they stick out through there. And that will just pop in. And you're good. Take your plug. Plug it into the spot. They always make these wires so short. I don't know why. But I guess there's nothing hanging around. And, you know, to get cut up and everything. So, so your fan set up now as far as that goes. Now you just got to wire it. These three wires. You have you know, power, ground, and you know, neutral. So, all right. This, I believe, this would be, the, yeah, this is the ground here. It's grounded on. I'm using three wire um, wiring. And if that's your core, I'm going to cut open and um, use that. But these two wires are the power and ground wires. And your neutral, I should say. And that's going to go right over here. So wiring your feet through here. I may just leave it like that. I may bend it a little bit. We'll see what happens. But a little further over, I'll probably notch it out so the wires come out somehow. And same over here. That tab back here is going to be bent so it sits flush. I want to sit as flush as I can. So. All right, I'll pick up in a little bit because actually the outlet's right here for this fan. I do the same thing I just did on that one. So it's not too bad. I leave a space there as long as the wires come out. It'll be good to go. All right, let's get those installed and I'll come back a little bit. Thanks. Okay, so I uh, mounted the fans here. These exhaust fans, I screwed them in place on both of these. I had this really cool tool that my brother gave me. Let's see if I can find the word somewhere in here. There it is. A little extension with the Phillips bit to get in there. This wasn't so bad, but to get in this tight spot back here was a little tricky, so this came pretty handy. Then I took a three inch hole saw and cut a hole right here for the exhaust. So I'll go through there with the exhaust uh, tube, and as you can see, the flue pipe I have here, the um, ductwork. So, what's gonna happen is this piece will come through here. it in there again 
sorry about using my hand here to try to I got a tripod yet so first time doing videos with YouTube in uh, you know how to videos so that's the one there so it's coming out it's kind of a snug fit I made it a little bigger with the uh, rims out a little bit but it's pretty cool I mean it's, it came out all right still some wood in the bottom so still secure and then this is gonna go like this just like that now this one here all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble this together I'm gonna take the fan out of the way and use the same hole saw to cut a hole into there so if I can get a hole cut somewhat because to get a T for this it's not going to be it's kind of a custom make thing you can't, you can't really get one that's made ready they don't make it so once I put that in place and secure it I'll take this fan out of the way leave that in place tape it up whatever over here so it doesn't move and then cut a piece to go to here to here from this, one of these, this pipe here and drill a hole into here to accommodate maybe put a little flap in there if I can of some sort to kind of divert the air that way, you know what I'm saying? Um, we'll see what happens, but that's uh, so far. So I get that ductwork all set up and I'll take the fan out and I'll show you when I drill the hole. Thanks. I, should, I, should, I guess I should stop saying thanks, huh? <laughs> I'm not used to doing videos and stopping and continuing, but we'll get up in a little bit. Okay, so continuing with the fan installation, um, put the exhaust fans in, I ran the ductwork, and I just taped the hell out of it with duct tape. I figured, um, this is not really designed for, you know, for fumes going through there. It's full pipe for heat, so some some of the heat escapes. Not so bad, um, but probably nothing escapes anyway. But you know what? Just to be safe, it doesn't hurt to put the duct tape on there, and we secure it and go up, you know, all the way around. So I'll lift it up real quick. I'll show you the back side. So this is the back side of it. Duct taped it at all, so it's all good. The corners here. I mean, it's not perfect, but you know what? It'll do. It'll work. So, all right. I'm gonna run the wire right now, and we'll come back a little bit. Okay. So, continue on with the spray booth project that I'm working on. I kind of went ahead of myself and um, forgot to record some of the stuff, but I'll fill you in what I did. Uh, the fans are installed. They're both screwed in tightly. They're wired up. Got wire going through here into switch. So they're all hooked up and everything. Um, what's cool about these is there's these plugs come out. So if the fan of it goes bad, just unplug it here, change the whole assembly here, the housing stays there, just replace it, the motor and so forth. So not too bad. But I um, created that little piece here. I cut it out, the little section I was talking about earlier, and duct taped it all. So it's all seamed up, and there's a little less chance of any fumes coming out. Went through here, duct taped it all through here. Made a little overkill, but you know, I feel more comfortable that way so but it's all wired up and everything else let's see what we got it's all plugged in let's turn on and uh see if they work as you can see they're working so i'm happy got pretty good velocity out of here pretty good air and let's just show you so it's 140 cfm's coming out of there so this thing's going for that so pretty powerful and if I unplug one of them this one should not spin it may spin a little bit may get some feedback in the other one let's see but that one doesn't spin but if I plug this one I think the other side might spin a little bit but nothing too severe it shouldn't be too bad let's see Yeah, it's spinning a little bit, but this is going pretty fast right here. See how fast that's spinning compared to that. The little flat parts in here that comes with these uh, exhaust fans. Now, if I close it up here, you'll hear a click and it'll stop spinning because the flap will close up. When I first tried this earlier before I recorded it, it actually closed up. So, But now, if I do this, you'll hear a little click. Those no, oh, it stopped. See that click uh, made it stop. There's a little flapper inside there. It clicks closed. It's a little flapper valve, but it's upside down, so the valve's going this way instead of you know like this up and down. It was the other way. The, um, the weight will keep bringing it down. I'm gonna see. If, I'm not sure if I can adjust those or flip it over or not, but it's not a big deal. And if I plug it back in, it's not working. The flapper is open. Let's check it again and see. 
it's not too bad because both fans obviously be running Mega just run one, so it's not that bad. It's just a little bit of here that goes, you know, feeds back. But the majority of it's still concerned. I mean, even with the paper, let's get that paper going. How to go here? Hmm. I had that finish. Even with this, still got pretty good flow. Even with that one spinning, so not too bad. Like I said, these will both be plugged in all the time. They'll both be working. And I'm going to cover this up here. I'm going to just put a board right here across, support it. And then put a plywood above here. And have the grills that go on those two right there. And then uh, that's it. Flip it over. We put a uh, plywood on the bottom, seal it up. And then I can start building the walls and so forth. And uh, we'll continue a little bit. Okay, so I've uh, done the wiring. I added a little more support here in the center. Put a brace in between, a bar in between there, or two by four in between there, support it a little better. So uh, put the, I cut the plywood already, which is right over here. I'm gonna put it in place, and I'll uh, put the grills in and see how it looks. Be right back. All right, guys, uh, pretty much down the base. As you can see, the grills are in place. Uh, the redu um, reducers there from four to three. And let's just open here so I can run the wires for the lights. Those plugs be knocked out, and uh, the lights will be inside the booth also. And it works out good because here's the turntable that I'll be using. So it's perfect. And the Hulk will fit on there, and any other, any other statue I have later on in the future. More room to spray, more room to work with. So the other one is uh, it's a temporary one. Well, actually, not temporary. I made that one first, but this one's bigger. So this will become a permanent one, and then the other one will be a uh, spare for small things and so forth. We'll see. I did goof up over here, as you see. <laughs> kind of went off a little bit. <laughs> oh well. I'm an automotive mechanic by trade, not a carpenter, but I try to do what I can, you know, it's fun. I had a good time doing this, so I'm not done yet, obviously. I'm still going to build the walls and all that. The sides and everything, so. But, so far, so good. To be continued. Okay guys, so continue with the spray booth. I've got a couple things I did. Uh, I want to show you real quick. I put some railing here. There's a quarter inch, uh, I'm sorry, half inch angle aluminum across here and back here. Back here I'm going to fill these in with some pieces of plywood. Insert it so I could drill back in. But I use just regular lath screws. Why is a flash on here? Let's see. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I use these screws right here. I'm going to just pull them into view here. These on array by half inch. I mean, you can use whatever you want, but they they were pretty much self tapping right into the metal, to aluminum, into the wood, and it worked out great just for that at least, at least that part. So I uh, put them all around, and the front obviously this is the front here. So I'll let this open. Hope you guys can see that pretty well. All right, so and I started making the walls now. What I do for the walls, though, sorry about the camera. I'm gonna have to get a better camera so I can prop it up and just show you guys. But see the railing here. This is actually the finishing edge for like tile. You can see that ceramic tile. That's just for. But who says it's just for that? I mean, you can do whatever you want with it. I guess you could modify it, use it for something else. So, but it's per basically made for that. As you see, the holes back here is where the glue gets stuck in through the tile and so forth. But what I'm doing now, I'm drilling holes. You can see these holes, drilling holes through there, through the corrugated board, and putting in rivets. So what I did was I just laid them out, drilled all the holes, and then um, make the holes a little bigger and then 316 rivets. And just um, go and pop them all in just like this. Try this one handed here. <laughs> there you go. And that's it. And this is basically all you're gonna use. The rivets I'm using are 316 rivets. I went with, went with the medium rivets so I can kind of get a good grab here. Kind of show you over here, see how it looks. So it's not too bad. It's a clean finish. I got the metal all the way across because I'm making this collapsible, like I said before. And this is my workbench for today. All the tools are out here, so <laughs> making it work. But uh, at least I want to show you that. I'm going to make the rest of the walls and I come back with the rest of it. Continue the video. I'm going to have the walls all made. Because I just want to see how. I just want to show you guys what I'm doing as far as 
um, to reinforce it. Because the corrugated board, obviously, you know, it's flimsy. But with this metal or this aluminum, I mean, it's pretty sturdy now. Same with metal spray booth the same way. I'll show you the spray booth the other one later on, back in the, later on in the video. The first one I built. So, all right, guys, uh, I'm going to pause this for now and continue what I'm doing. So, be back in a little bit. Okay, so coming back to the spray booth here, I've made quite a bit of progress here. Uh, this is the last part of the video. And uh, all the walls are up. I, what I did was I uh, put these clevis pins in. Let's see right here. For now, because like I said before, at the beginning of the video, this is going to be a temporary portable type of booth because it's going to that room right there. As you can see, this thing is uh, 30 inches wide. The doorway is about 29. So that's my office in there. That's where my statue room is. So this is going to be sprayed. I'm going to have to take this booth and put it in there. But in the meantime, for now, I'm going to pull it apart and put it in there. We're going to build it out here. More room out here, obviously. But once I get it all built and properly uh, assembled, I'll take it apart, put it in there, and do what i got to do with the Hulk statue. But um, going back to what I was doing, I've got the lights in, as you can see. They're kind of wired up, so I just hang in there. just got to re rewire them. just want to put them up today to see how they turned out. So all the walls are up pretty solid. I mean, this piece here that still needs a piece of metal on it like the other pieces have. And around the metal, I have to get some more from the store, but it's up. And the fans work pretty well. As do the lights. So it's pretty well lit up. It's T5 uh, LED lights. So got them on eBay. It was a pretty good deal. I picked up about, I don't know, 10 of these. The guy had them on sale. It was a best offer deal. So put them in my other spray booth on my bench. Use them a couple different places. And the last three I got right here. So. Worked pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty well lit up. I'm gonna turn the fan off you know, so you can hear me a little better. But, um, yeah, I'll be able to see what I'm doing in there now. A lot of different angles. I, I actually have two more of these light strips because I need more in there, but I think that's enough. <laughs> so, it looks different in the camera than it does in person because lighting affects the camera view. But, um, yeah, those wires obviously won't be hanging in the middle. They'll be routed up on top to this outlet here, right over here. That'll be over here. And this will be routed all nicely around there. So, And then once I move into the new home and it'll be permanent, I'll assemble this with rivets and make it solid. So that's basically it. I'm going to take a quick walk around it so you see the side. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. And so that's it. Pretty cool, pretty big, and uh, save myself a lot of money doing this. So if you guys want to do one of these these yourself, I mean, it's pretty cool to do them. It's, it's not that bad. It's, it looks harder than it really is. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's, you know it's not made in a factory. But for so do yourselfer, and a booth like this would probably run you. Of course, it's made of, out of aluminum. It's all solid. I see them on eBay, and I see them advertised about eight hundred bucks. So I've got about I less than two hundred into this, including the fans and the wood and everything else. So the lights were you know included also in that. So just under two hundred bucks. A little time, but you know, hey. If you have a little time to uh, to spare, it's better to spend less than 200 and spend 800 for something that's solid. You can't break it down. It's heavy and it's got handles on the side here now. So, see the little handle right there. One on each side. Once it's broken down, you can carry it from there and move where I gotta go. So, all right. So that concludes the video for now. I may leave another part behind this after this, um, but it's pretty much it. I might do a final one as it's all sealed up. I want to put the foam seal in between the joints there. Right now it's just loose, but those pins are just there for temporary. All right, guys, uh, let me finish off a little bit, and I'll uh, come back with a little more at the end. Thanks. Okay, guys, continuing with our little project here of our spray booth for the, the Hulk statue. I remember last time with the video cut off, um, there was wires hanging here from the lights. And what I did was I was able to figure something out here because these these lights were going to have three three of these. Sorry, I'm going too fast there. Through these cables attached to that inside this booth somewhere around here. So I decided, you know what? These lights come with these little adapters. Okay, so female um, female end and a male end. Okay. What happens is these are you able to put these in sequence. See right over here? Let me pop that off for you. And they're running pretty secure. Okay, let's see this. See that goes right into there, and you could connect. 
hopefully they get to clear there a little bit. You can connect these in sequence, basically one and the other. Let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. Like I have my uh, light here, in my hobby room. There's two lights bolted together. There's a piece in between there that connects the two together. It's a little dark in there. That connects those together. So going back to this. So what I did was I bought little pigtails. Reconnect that. There you go. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get a tripod for the next time to do the video. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I reconnected back in there. So now what I have is one extension cord going to the solid. I'm going to make this, this wire shorter. No need for the video that long anymore. I had this on because originally it was reaching up to here. And I was going to put a three-prong on there. Three, three-prong adapter for two, three of these wires. But now I'm going to have to do that. So I use these connectors that I was showing before. And you have these little sleeves. Let's slide onto the male ends. I'm sorry, let me see if I can focus on that. Let's see if I can stick this. Okay, well, not getting clear because it's the background. It's what's picking up. Anyway, these three prongs right here, these three male ends, I put three of these on there. And the other ones are pigtails, basically off of connectors. And I wired them all together. Make sure it went in the right spot, solder all the connections, and uh, tapes all together. And what we have is now turn one switch on, and they all light up. So only one wire hanging here. I'm going to make this shorter, put it close to the wall here, and that's it. So continue on with this. Uh, almost done. And I only get to work on a Friday and Saturday night, so this is uh, actually Saturday night. And I'll get done with it soon, and then I'll do a really full video all together, a lot of pieces together, I'll have to do some editing and um, told you what I used, I'll tell you what I used, supplies and so forth, so you want to build your own. You know, these are, some people probably say, why don't you just buy lights that have wires that go together? Well, the whole idea of this whole spray booth is to not spend a ton of money on a spray booth that's going to get messed up and dirty anyway. Uh, something that's practical, something that's durable, that you can use, and uh, it's functional. This will work for me. So... Let me just find the other one I have here. This other one I built is right here. It's covered up right now. Let me open the door real quick. I have a door on it so I can put it on there. I built this one not too long ago. Turn that light on. So this is not big enough for the Hulk, which I am working on right over there right now. Sneak peek. <laughs> so that's the first big one I did. It's not that big. As you can see, it's good size for like my rogue statue and Celine that I did. But for the Hulk, it's not going to work. I mean, it's good for all these guys in here. If you see all these guys in here, I had to kind of modify my shelving to make some room. So I got the other ones up here to finish up. But now my Rogue and Celine are off the shelf, as you can see. Rogue was there and Celine was right there. Now they're upstairs in my display case, which I'll post eventually on here also. And I'm working on the Hulk here, Hulkbuster. And here's the Hulk right here. My office is a little bit of a mess, but I try to. See, I've got a limited room in here. Lights off, so it's kind of dark in here. Turn back on. But I'm working on this guy here, so I make some room, and the table's going to go actually over here. So it's a small room I've got up. It's a house I'm renting. And I have to do what i got to do to make it work. I don't want to stop my progress on my statues just because I'm living in a you know, house that has a small room here, so no worries. I work around it. Everything's functional, works good. So i got access to everything here. So, But back to... The Hulk spray booth. We'll get it done and I'll finish up the video and put it all together and tell you guys what I used. And uh, hopefully, you guys can uh, do this yourself if you'd like. Hopefully, this was information for, a lot of information for you. Hope it was educational, helps you out. And uh, we'll continue a little bit. Thanks.